Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and this is my last video clip broadcast of 2015 and the year has gone by very very quickly. So I always take a couple weeks off, um, not completely off, I, I promise I'll be home working and researching and reading and doing things that will make a difference next year and I'll bring you all kinds of great information but um, I do stop doing some things and this is one of them for a couple weeks at the end of the year. All right, so how I'm going to finish the year is um, to talk about 20 lab tests that are useful, useless and harmful, according to the FDA. Uh, the FDA is actually charged with regulating laboratory-developed tests, which are being used more frequently in medical practice today, and they recently analyzed events related to 20 different tests and concluded that the tests were useless and in some cases harmful. Now, some of the problems were false positives, people being told they were sick when they weren't, this leads to unnecessary treatment. Then there are false negatives, which means the person's really sick, sometimes even life-threateningly sick, doesn't find out that he or she is and doesn't get treatment. And then some of these um, uh, tests provide data that had no proven relationship to the disease or condition or, or use theories of disease that were simply not ever proven or had been discredited. And um, I like the report. The report was really lengthy. I'm going to summarize just you know, bullet points for you here. Uh, but they actually did go to the trouble in some cases of, of uh, showing what the cost, the actual new, uh, monetary cost was of using some of these useless and harmful tests. So I'm going to give you a quick summary here. Uh, one was the Lyme disease diagnostic test, um, which is to diagnose Lyme disease. And uh, the problem is studies show large numbers of people with positive tests don't have Lyme disease, which boy, that's been a, a recurring theme here, um, is people being told that they have Lyme disease who don't. And in the meantime, things that really were wrong with them weren't being addressed. The cost of the inaccuracy was about $1,226 per case. And if you look at the incidence of misdiagnosis in this country, it's a bunch of money we're spending. Then there were a couple, uh, there were three of them actually that dealt with ovarian cancer, the Ovacheck ovarian cancer screening and detection test, um, screening uh, program for ovarian cancer, false positives can cause unnecessary surgery and removal of healthy ovaries. Um, the the uh, test is not yet on the market. I wish I could tell you that this would mean it would never be on the market, but the FDA is not so good at keeping things off the market. But there were two that um, uh, that are on the market, and uh, one is the Ovisure ovarian cancer screening test. Again, purpose is screening for ovarian cancer. Uh, no validation that the test um, predicts or detects ovarian cancer. And the cost of the inaccuracy is $12,558 per ovary removed as the result of the pot false positive results. So if a woman has both ovaries taken out, we're talking about over $25,000 per case. Uh, the same thing is true, and the cost is about the same for, for another ovarian cancer screening test. And um, this one is to identify women with a higher risk of ovarian cancer and to guide treatment for women who have it. No evidence that the test results correlate with cancer or predict therapeutic response. Um, and of course I'm not worried so much about reading you the exact names of these things. You can read the article in the library and uh, get more information that way. The whooping cough diagnostic PCR test um, is supposed to be an improved diagnostic test for whooping cough. Uh, false positives, patients who don't have whooping cough are told that they do. Um, they don't have an estimated cost of inaccuracy on this one. Now there's an oncotype HER2 breast cancer test and it's supposed to guide treatment for women with HER2 positive positive uh, uh, breast cancer. And the problem is false negatives, poor test sensitivity, patients uh, risk not getting the right treatment. The cost of the inaccuracy blew my mind, $775,278 per false negative case. No wonder the, the healthcare bill in our country is over $3 trillion, right? Um, the human papillomavirus test using SurePath collection medium uh, determine uh, the purposes to determine or assist in management of precancerous cervical lesions. Uh, the problems are false negative tests, precancerous cells might progress to cervical cancer and require more extreme treatment, the cost of inaccuracy not estimated. Um, what bothers me about all of this HPV vaccine and HPV testing is that we have an excellent tool for reducing, that has reduced deaths from cervical cancer called the 
pap tests and all this other nonsense. Um, we're fixing a problem we don't have anymore. We should be spending all this money getting pap testing into areas of the world and where it's not commonly done. So uh, this one really uh, gets me upset. All right, then there's a non-invasive prenatal testing. It's a cell-free DNA testing, and it's supposed to detect fetal chromosomal abnormalities. False positives, lack of evidence that test, uh, that test detects and predicts fetal abnormalities, doesn't estimate the uh, cost of the inaccuracy, but I, I have a particular problem with these types of tests because what we're doing is we're turning healthy pregnant women into worried women. That's not good for pregnant women. And just FYI, next year, one of our colleagues, uh, Dr. Janice Stanger, is working on creating a complete course for pregnant women that everything from A to Z, all the tests, um, everything through delivery uh, with an analysis of all this stuff and, and will help women avoid getting sucked into this type of stuff at a, variable, at a very vulnerable time in their lives. Um, then there's a new fibromyalgia test which is supposed to diagnose and quantify fibromyalgia. The problem is false positives, patients may take unnecessary drugs, underlying conditions may go undiagnosed and untreated while people get labeled with fibromyalgia. Cost of inaccuracy, nobody knows at this point. Then we have a genotype test to predict heart disease risk and statin therapy response, which is basically useless, and no estimate on the cost of that one. Then we've got a cancer biomarker test. Problem is, um, it's supposed to uh, um, uh, deal with cancer diagnosis and guide treatment. Um, it has never been proven. Uh, and, and one of the problems is that a lot of times this thing ends up recommending, this particular tool ends up recommending combinations of treatments that have never been tried anywhere. Um, and the patient may opt to do something like that with, and, and, and do something that might have been, and avoid something that might have been actually affected. There's so much bad stuff in the cancer field and it just seems like we keep adding more. And then there's a prostate cancer biomarker test that has been shown to not have it, no evidence that it improves clinical outcomes. And of course, half the, more than half of the men who are having this kind of thing done didn't even have prostate cancer in the first place. Those of you who are with us at our conference in November and heard uh, Dr. Adlin speak know that, um, and that we have a million men in this country who have had an unnecessary prostatectomy as a result of a silly PSA test that does not tell you anything about cancer and a Gleason score that does not tell you if you have cancer or not. Uh, then there's a test for chronic fatigue syndrome, and it's also proven to be useless and has caused many patients to take antiviral drugs who actually don't have chronic fatigue. They didn't have a cost of inaccuracy. Now, the one area where I really disagreed with them um, in, in part of what they found, the Care Clinics Autism Biomarkers Test, which is to test genetic markers for heavy metal intoxication uh, to look at the cause of autism and determine treatment. And um, they rendered, they said this, this was useless. All right, so um, I think that, that it is useless in some cases, but they say it's inappropriate and useless for all children with autism. Furthermore, they listed the cost of the inaccuracy at $66.1 million. This is the one test that they, uh, out of the 20 that they, they looked at, that didn't look at a per person or per case uh, cost of inaccuracy. And furthermore, even that, um, the, the authors of the report assumed that children subjected to the test were misdiagnosed by looking at tax returns for the Center for Autism Spectrum Disorders and Care Clinics. There were no data directly solicited for analysis. Now, when they didn't have available data for all the other ones, they just put, they couldn't, you know, not estimated, they didn't know the cost of the inaccuracy. But on this one, they looked at a bunch of tax returns and from that, they extracted data on the uselessness of a diagnostic test. Now, I'm troubled by this because while it might have been unintended, I'll give you that, it appears that there is some bias here. The diagnosis of children with heavy metal toxicity would be very troublesome for vaccine makers and health authorities who continue to insist that the adjuvants in vaccines are not harmful for children. And the fact that 19 out of 20 of the others were handled completely different, this was just a big red flag for me. I'm always suspicious of the FDA anyway. They must misbehave all the time. Heavy metal chelation challenge, useless. 
Um, false positive results, patients with positive results may not have heavy metal intoxication, and uh, dangerous and unproven treatments often administered. Vitamin D deficiency tests, my gosh, I've been writing about that for years. Guess what? It's useless. All right, so the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, everybody has said stop this nonsense. Of course, that doesn't mean anything to people who are sold on it. Uh, the OncoView genetic breast cancer risk test, um, and so this is a genetic test combining um, that combines mutation profile with personal history to predict breast cancer uh, risk doesn't work um, uh, and, and has led to unnecessary mastectomy and the use of drugs like tamoxifen, no cost of inaccuracy estimated. And then there's another test to guide melanoma treatment that um, has no evidence and, and uh, no cost estimated. Uh, the FDA listed two tests that undermine drug approval or drug treatment selection, both for cancer patients. So the bottom line is that I will give the FDA some credit uh, that it's actually taken the time to analyze this. Of course, they say that tests that are useless and harmful should be more carefully regulated by who else? The FDA. Um, but their track record, this agency's track record in protecting um, Americans' health is so miserable, I'm, I'm not too geeked up about the fact that they want to do more in this area. Um, and this report addresses 20 tests out of the dizzying array and growing number of tests that, are patients, that patients are told are even um, uh, you know, nagged and, and um, badgered about, about taking. So there's, this will not solve the problem even if they actually do something about this mess. So I think we'll just continue to tell patients, you know what, you just got to learn to say no. Uh, these are examples of useless tests, certainly there are more. All right, well, this is all for today. So pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. It's actually all for the year. So I wish you and your families and your friends a wonderful holiday season. Don't eat anything I wouldn't eat. Hear my little voice in the back of your head. Have a happy, healthy, healthy, emphasis on the healthy, holiday season. And I will be back to you in January with even more news. There's no end to the news, no end to the things that we have to talk about. So after this brief two-week hiatus, I will speak with you again in 2016.